And just like the end of the Hoi 4 act on this channel, Victoria 2 is coming to an end. Not just yet, though. Don't worry. And hey, how's it going, everyone? It's me, Ice Star Productions, back in the world of Victoria 2, the Victorian era economy simulator, where you also do some unsavory things to natives over the course of your time playing. But just like the unsavory things I do to natives, I want to do to you too. That's why I'm going to go ahead and do a Victoria 2 giveaway to mark the coming of an end of the Victoria 2 era on my channel. So I'll be giving away a whole bunch of copies of Victoria 2 with the DLC. All you need to do is click the Gleam link in the description, sign up, link your YouTube. That's all you need to do. It's like two buttons or something. And then all I ask you guys to do is either link your Twitter for the love of God so I can directly DM the codes to you or register an email you're actually going to check because that's how I send them out and I still have people to this day not checking their goddamn emails. But anyway, I'm super grateful I managed to get you guys so interested in Victoria 2, but let's not ramble anymore. Let's get straight into the meme thing I can do. Right, so you ever heard of this mod called the Divergences of Darkness? Well, it's a very great mod, which I've played once before on the channel, where England and France... They're one thing! I can honestly say it's the most cursed scenario I can possibly think of where England and France haven't, you know, spent a couple hundred years just proactively slapping each other. Since the mod actually got translated over into HPM, which is another mod now, instead of the Pop Demand mod, I'm actually way more interested in giving this thing another go, especially as... The dual monarchy. I, I just saying it makes me want to throw up. Just every time I look at it, I just kind of want to puke a little bit. But come on, England and France living together in harmony. Now nah, they're, they're those two weird exes that had that one night stand, and now they just hate each other's guts. It just does not make sense. Yeah, but unsurprisingly, if you did stitch the body of England and France together, and the cadaver did not rot to the core, then you'll be left with a pretty damn powerful country. Exactly how this thing is held together, I don't know, other than good good wishes and bloody miracle but we're here and we, we gotta we, we gotta make the most of what we got currently what we got is just a whole big mess that needs to be sorted out oh i've got the liberal party in charge i can't even tax the lower class all the way what is the point of having the liberal party if i can't liberally tax my people a hundred percent so i played until 1850 beforehand to try and see how the dual monarchy works and it's kind of like kaiserreich where you get these events you've got no idea what could possibly happen by clicking the events but sometimes you just gotta click and hope for the best and that, that event right there could have just made my nation explode 20 years from now, but we'll find out together. I thought I'd be cheeky and just get a war goal on Burgundy, but immediately got caught for 10.4 infamy. So, that's nice. Good thing about this mod, though, is that you actually get a much bigger infamy limit reduction over time because, uh, yeah, yeah there's not really anyone that's going to stop me. Uh, more French land for me, even though I don't think I'm technically even French. I'm Anglois, which... It's just, imagine if you just had, like, a French person and an English person kissing for, like, 400 years. That's what Anglo is. Also, if you wonder what that Burgundian land cost me, uh, bankruptcy, apparently. The best part is because of the infamy limit reduction is that we could just really go to war with anyone and just get as much land as we possibly can. Ah, uh, you know what I said about those Kaiserreich events? Well, uh, guess what? My, my, my heir just got assassinated by English nationalists. <laughs> God damn, I bet it was Boris Johnson, wasn't it? At least I think that was my heir that got killed. I literally have no idea. I don't know how this country functions, let alone, like, who's in charge. So you might be wondering what my grand strategy for this game might be, and uh, it's actually pretty simple. Just invade everywhere, honestly. It's, it's nice to see I'm not the only one confused by the history and timeline of this mod, because even my French patriots down here have no idea why they're in Africa. God, I wish that was me getting burned to the ground by French patriots. Yeah, it's not that surprising that the English people aren't that happy being in a union with France. Next up on the agenda is India, which has been largely untouched by European power, so I want to go ahead and get my wrinkly little fingers all over it. Um, oh, I just realised I'm still at war with a South African country. My bad. I'm just going ignore them and hopefully they'll go away. Alright, first up on the agenda, I'll be taking myself a whole plate of ma majurai. Majurai. I'll be, I'll be having a nice spicy ma majurai. Oh, here we go. I can poke my nose into Italian politics now. Sure, why the hell not? I, I can't think of a better world where Italy also exists in this horrible splintered world. Oh, was I supposed to take province, like, sooner? Because, um, apparently that's the end of the Hundred Years' War. I think that's a bit longer than a hundred years. It's 1850, for God's sake. Right, since the Aragonese are being very arrogant ease, I, I can't kick them out of Italy without going to war with them, so we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. Oh, uh, uh, scratch that. 
my my country is about to explode now. Oh God! Where the hell's that flex tape guy when you need him? All right, it's actually not as bad as it looks. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go take them out one by one because they don't actually have that much in the way of armies except for England currently. But uh, I think we can still come back from this. This is how the Franco-British Union can still win. <laughs> Uh, I'm killing so many of my own people here. It's ridiculous. I don't think this war is worth it one single bit. Right, we've got the French and the uh, Occitanians very easily. I don't know how to say that, but they, England's going to be a whole nother matter. So I sort of managed to do a reverse D-Day on England here, but I, I did kill like 100,000 air troops. They killed like 100,000 my troops. Now I have eight, eight unrest, which means uh, the red... That's bad. Right. Revolts put down. England put down. Now we've just got to deal with the damn Irish. It's funny because the Irish actually put up way more of a fight than the French did there. Which <laughs> I'm not saying anything. But we're back. I killed so many of my own people in that war that Leinster is now my most populous province. Are you kidding me? Oh yeah, I completely forgot I was going to go to War of Aragon. Kind of got like sidetracked by the whole... My nation exploded. Haven't even recovered, but I'm still gonna do it. Oh, jeez. All I actually get from that is that I create Italy. I, I thought I might get a little bit more than just Italy. Is this too late to return Italy? This is the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals. As soon as Italy formed, Aragon declared war on them with zero troops. Hey, I know what will uh, fix my country. I'll just splice on another lifeless corpse of a country and I'm sure it'll even itself out. So the infamy reduction buff that happens in the first part of the game is gone now. So it's going to be a lot slower for us to take over places. But I, I did manage... No. Why? I... I hate you! So yeah, anyway, I, I took out the Mughals. So we've, we've got a nice bit of India, but it's going to be a lot slower for us to take the rest of it now. Ottoman Empire? Turkey? Sublime Porte? What the hell is that? You know, I just noticed something right now. That Italy is naturally fully controlled. Ferrara still exists, but it's the exact same color as them. So it's just camouflaged in between it. <laughs> Sneak 100! I'm really glad that Italy and Aragon are just fighting in my land. Can you guys get a room, please? Uh, I think the AI doesn't really know how to colonize because uh, Australia has been uncolonized this whole time and I, I didn't even realize. So I just took out Abu Dhabi and I was like, hey, you know what would make Abu Dhabi even better? Hey, what if Poland, Lithuania owned just this random part of Iran? It's a uh, scramble for Africa time and no one's really scrambling. It's just me slowly taking over all of it. Yeah, it's not really so much of a scramble when I literally have time to also go invade India. It, it's more of a very slow pace into Africa. Oh, I shouldn't have told them to get a room because now Italy just fully annexed Catalonia. I, I don't... Why does this happen? What? Yeah, the scramble for Africa, or as it's known in this timeline as the peaceful walk through the Serengeti, is um, it's actually very slow and very disgusting to look at. Oh, God, it just gets worse and worse. Like, every time. God damn it, what is this? See, I didn't want the Irish people to rise up because I really wanted them to still be my most populous province, but now I've got to go kill them. All okay, right, whoever's in charge of my country just declared themselves a presidential dictator. Everything's just going great over here, by the way, guys. <laughs> End me. Just end me. Oh, it's fine. Don't worry. As soon as I became a presidential dictatorship, the game crashed. <laughs> Conveniently, just after I sorted out all my factories. So, yeah, I found the issue with the crash. It's whenever I hover over this secret police event down here, uh, it crashes the game. So, I'm not going to hover over that or touch it. I'm just going to use a cheat to turn my, my government back from presidential dictatorship. Where we're not going to go near the cursed secret police button. But, yeah, if anyone knows whoever's working on the HBM port for this mod, uh, please let them know to fix that bad boy. So, yeah, since I was tell you guys when a cheat's been used in Victoria 2, there you go. Boom. I had to change myself away from a republic, at least a presidential dictatorship because I can't click on any events without it crashing. My bad. I've angered the gods with my cheating because the socialists have risen up to retake power. Oh, regardless, I've been turned to a republic with the socialist party in control, but um, I, I don't have the event, so it, it's all cool. Although, unlike the liberal party, the socialists do let me tax the people all the way. Now, that's true socialism. I just had another event that would have exploded my country, but luckily, I got the, the one that works and totally didn't have to reload the save like five times until, until I got the event that did explode my country. 
I love mods. They're so great. Oh, a German state finally formed. It's a Danubian confederacy, and it's immediately getting invaded by Hungary and Burgundy, which is just great because there's no counterbalance to me in this game whatsoever. Right, I can't go to war with Burgundy, right? Yeah, so I'm just going to go to war with the Artmans or the Sublime Porte, as they are known. That's cool. First to the North Pole, though. That's, uh... It's gonna look real good next to the Arab revolt going on. Oh yeah, Meteor hits Japan. It's <laughs> just like one of my City Skylines videos. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm not gonna be able to get a great war out of this game, so I'm just gonna go to war with Burgundy and dismantle them. What was originally me just dismantling Burgundy has me turned into dismantling the Ottoman Empire to Spain and Hungary. Oh yeah, when you, you tell the boys you're going for a quick one in Belgium and then you dismantle half the countries in the world. I can't even begin to explain just how disgusting I'm imagining the world is gonna look when all these nations just blow up. Yeah, oh god, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty damn bad. Although Europe's not that bad. It actually split up just between Belgium and the Netherlands, but um, I, I think I'm gonna go leave it here for today. There's not really much to stop me. I'm, if you just look at the Great Power List and you understand that there's no real reason for me to continue playing at this point, um... The, the mod's pretty fun, like I said, but um, I, I think the the, um, the United Republic or the dual monarchy is a um, <clears throat> slightly overpowered. But the world actually turned out you know, pretty not that great, actually. Uh, Africa never even got fully colonized because the AI just for some reason didn't do it. Uh, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, that's disgusting. I got a lot of India, that was pretty cool. And the rest of the world was pretty standard. Not a lot got colonized because obviously after 1850 or so, you lose all the cool infamy buffs. So a lot of the stuff ends up not being taken. Um, I, I do like the fact the mod is now on HPM though. I 100% prefer HPM over Pop Demand. So I really, really hope they continue to develop this and fix out all the bugs. Especially the ones with the events that happened when you turn into a dictatorship. Uh, that, that kind of ruined it for me because I had to just stay as a republic the rest of the game. Which again, pretty boring. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you leave a like at the subscribe button. Go ahead and join the giveaway down below. It might be your only chance now. There are only going to be a couple more Victoria 2 videos on the channel for the foreseeable future. And of course, I, I really am grateful that you guys have found enjoyment in Victoria 2. It's a game I know a lot of people aren't that interested in. But are now very interested in. And there is a renewed interest in the game. So... Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, please leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and let me know what should my last Victoria 2 video actually be.